So let's delve into new product development. How do you create new product? There is a problem and you provide a solution. There's a problem statement and you provide a solution. So this is what we used to do when I was in US. When we were creating these medical devices, we would meet with you know doctors. We would see the actual procedures being done by the doctor uh, for you know installing the devices into the patient. So we would observe the doctor and see what problems the doctor is facing. And then we would come up with solutions so that the, the surgery becomes easier for the doctor. We also would interview the doctor and get their feedback on our devices so that we can modify the device to provide a solution to their problem. So the first idea here is provide a solution to a problem that is existing. That's, a new, that's one of the ways of creating a new product. Another idea is cut paste. What is it? Like give you an example of the plastics industry. Like 40 years ago, there were not many products made out of plastic. Then some products were manufactured out of plastic. Then what happened is, uh, you know, household items started being manufactured out of plastic. Then uh, somebody thought of creating furniture items like chairs. And then we have now, you know, the car interiors and exteriors, everything is plastic. So once it is working for a particular field, you try to use it to a different uh, field or a, a different uh, manufacturing process and use it in a different uh, different industry altogether and create product. Basically, you're trying to create replacements, uh, you know, trying to replace wood with plastic or metal with plastic. So just using the, you know, using the... Uh, creating new products by using the same technology. Now, another ex another way to create a new product is enhance. An existing product, You what you do is you enhance the functionality of the product, you enhance the looks of the product, or you enhance the life of the product. And if you are able to do that, then you have a new product. Another good example is combined. So you, as you can see here, you know, there was a spoon which exists out there, fork which exists out there. So somebody created this product which is called a fork, which is a combination of a spoon and a fork. So this is also a great idea. You know, you combine several features to create a product. That's how you can uh, come up with new products. Or another idea would be separate. So for example, like, you know, the iPhone is a good example of, of a product. So iPhone... Before iPhone, there were only devices where you can listen to music. Then iPhone was invented where you could uh, listen to music and make calls. So there are several features in a phone. You can text, you can call, you can do video call, you can look at movies, you can uh, do several tasks with a phone. So same thing if you separate each and every feature, and then you can then also you can create a new product. So there are devices like an iPad is created where you can not make phone calls, but you can make, uh, you know, see videos or do other tasks. So similarly, you know, combining and separating features also helps create new products. So now we're going to delve into new product development. How do you create new products? Idea generation, the first step. You have an idea, you know, you have an idea of a particular product. Then what you do is you, you draw up the product and then you decide what is the new product pricing. You know, if you're trying to create a product and what is the pricing involved? Suppose if you are coming up with the idea and the pricing involved is too high, then you know, you can kill the project right there because even though the product is great, you know, it won't be able to, you won't be able to sell it to the market. Then uh, you have these ideas then you do idea screening. You have a few ideas, you do product pricing, and then based on the product pricing, you decide what is the idea that is going to work for you in order to create a product. So you select, you know, among the different ideas, you select the idea that is going to work for you. The one that you decide to go ahead with, then you do concept development and testing. So, uh, you know, you create some prototypes, you know, um, you, you check how they work, you also do, uh, you know, functional testing and other things to make sure it's going to work. It, it does perform what you are expecting it to. So you do concept development and testing. Then you do a business analysis. 
that suppose we try to make this product what is the investment required you know what will be the plastic that we're going to use you know how how much production can we do in a day you know is it does it make business sense to you know manufacture this how many customers we're going to get uh, and our, you know who are our customers what segment we can approach so do all these business analysis then you do commercialization where you know you will have to do some uh, uh, you know think about what will be the investment required what kind of machines will you be required what kind of process you will require to process the you know the the plastic and all that now before after that you would do beta testing and market testing you know you will create prototypes you, can, you know in this uh, day and age where you can just 3d print anything so you just do 3d printing and do beta testing you uh, you know share this product show it to your customer show it to your market show it to your wholesalers so, uh, everybody get their you know uh, input on your product and everything once looks promising you do the technical implementation which is you know actually you know getting some investments you know getting a machine getting the product developed or you know uh, you can team up with anybody like ourselves where you know, where we provide all different uh, you know consulting services where we also provide uh, products uh, you know developing products from concept ideas so you know you can uh, team up with uh, uh, companies where which help you to you know create products and manufacture them like us so this is the basic process of new product development next slide i'm going to show you the 10 steps to develop high quality plastic parts now we're going to go into a little bit of detail here so here once you have a, a, a product idea what you do is you would sketch it so this is the process that we always follow when a customer approaches us so you know you you, you would sketch the product you know do a concept idea sketch then you know have a designer uh, draw it on the computer you create a 3d model you know use different softwares like autocad and solidworks and pro e and uh, you know create a 3d versions of the particular concept idea sketch then you would do prototyping you know you could use cnc prototyping or you can do 3d printing and you know create prototypes and see the functionality and then you know uh after doing all these uh, prototyping you know there will be design changes so after several iterations when the design changes are uh, fixed and final you know design is frozen and then what you would do is select the material what kind of material you need based on the properties you want that particular plastic uh product to perform so you select the material and then uh, before creating the mold uh what you would do is mold flow analysis now mold flow is a simulation software which is used to virtually manufacture the product in the computer so what it is done is you create a design you know with the help of the software of the particular product and then you try to manufacture the product in the computer using mold flow analysis you basically virtually injection mold the product so when you do mold flow analysis what do you understand is is the product really manufacturable if it is then how complicated it is or how easy it's going to be and what are the challenges you're going to face and what are the sections of the product that you need to modify in order for it to be manufacturable so all this is done with the help of the computer and you don't need to actually uh, you know you will save a lot of time by doing it in the computer rather than doing it actually with the help of a particular mold and then learning it so once you're done with the mold flow analysis then you would do uh, you know make the actual mold or, or the die for the product and then you know before doing that you would also you know consider a, a dfm review that is a design for manufacturability you want to ensure that you're creating a mold that you can really use to manufacture the product then you would select the right machine depending on the size and the cavitation of the um, of the mold you have to select the particular molding machine that you will have to use in order to manufacture the product so you select the machine and then you select the right process parameters and here the role of ram comes in here or real art of molding you set the machine parameters by uh, you know using ram or real art of molding and you also create a ram window now i'm going to talk about ram and ram window in the future slides so uh, this is the basic 10 step criteria that you should follow when you're trying to create a new plastic product from a concept idea 
So now uh, you understand the process now of creating a new product. Now I'm going to share with you different processing techniques of plastics. Extrusion, we're going to cover extrusion, compression molding, blow molding, rotational molding, and thermoforming. And the last but not the least, injection molding. All right. So we're going to cover these six processes. I'm going to explain these processes to you. So let's go to the first process here, extrusion. Now, there are different types of extrusion uh, that is used to create several different kinds of products. So the first one that we're going to cover here is film extrusion, which is cast film extrusion. As you can see here, this is a cast film extrusion line. It is used to create a product which looks like this here, which is actually the stretch film, which is used for pallet wrapping. So um, any company which is into manufacturing of bulk you know, goods, then they would probably stack these goods on a pallet and one of these films is, you, you know, the stretch films is used to wrap around the pallet so that the contents are safe and they don't spill. You must have also observed that this kind of rolls are used for, you know, uh, if you are moving, then the mover will also use this kind of rolls to, you know, uh, save the furniture from damage by, you know, putting this film around the furniture. So it is used for, uh, used in the industry uh, very widely. So stretch film. It's a, uh, it's here in this process, we use about two, you know, three to five extruders, depending on the type of extrusion. When I was in US, I worked for a company where uh, we had four extruders that we used and we were running the machine at uh, 6,500 pounds per hour. So it was quite a, you know, quite a, really fast processor it was a huge machine and uh, you know um, we were making like seven layers so there could be three to seven or ten layers of film the next is blown film extrusion now blown film extrusion the machine or equipment looks like this here where there's a die in the bottom and the plastic is extruded from the bottom to top and uh, it's extruded in a circular fashion and there is air blown inside which helps create a bubble like structure and it is used to manufacture bags different kinds of bags that we see or use at our home uh, these bags are manufactured with the help of the blown film extrusion process now here also in this blown film uh, you know the volume and the temperature of air helps determine the properties of the plastic also the thickness of the plastic and there are different other uh, rollers on the top which pull the plastic when it is extruded from the die. So that uh, speed of pull also helps uh, determine the properties and the thickness of the plastic bag being extruded. Now we're going to look at sheet extrusion. Now uh, there are different kinds of sheets, different color sheets as you can see here. They are extruded with the help of an extrusion process as well. Here also we can have, you know, one, two, three extruders which are used to create different layers of sheets or it could be a single layer or you could have, you know, multiple layers are in the sheet. And these sheets, you know, there are uh, sheets used throughout the industry. You know, there are sheets which are used uh, uh, for lamination purpose or, you know, for creating uh, panels of doors and uh, windows and uh, uh, rooftops and stuff like that. So that is film extrusion. I'm sorry, sheet extrusion. Next, we're going to look at tube extrusion. Tube extrusion is also um, a very uh, interesting process here. As you can see, there is a die here, which is extruding the tubing. The tubing coming out is uh, goes into this. On the left side, you can see there is a trough which has water in it. So the extruded comes out and it is cooled into the water bath. Now, as you can see here, there are you know different kinds of tubings are produced and majority of these tubings are used in industrial and medical applications. The first tube on the right, you can see it has two holes inside. So it's a two lumen tubing and it is typically used for medical devices or industrial applications where you want, you know, uh, two mediums to be, uh, you know, you, you are able to transfer two mediums to the same tubing. So here we have an example, which is of a three lumen tubing, which is the green tubing. Then there's a four lumen tubing, which is blue. Then there we have a plus profile extruded in the purple tubing. And then we have six lumen tubing, which is the red tubing. 
Then uh, last uh, extrusion process that we're going to look at here is uh, profile extrusion. This uh, uh, is also similar to the tube extrusion. The only difference is there is a different die instead of a tubing. It is a profile. You know, different kinds of profiles are created. Uh, these profiles are used uh, throughout industrial and home applications. Uh, these profiles, depending on the polymer used to extrude, they are you, you can easily replace metal profiles because metal profiles are expensive and the plastic profiles uh, you know could be uh, uh, you know cheaper than the metal aluminum ones that are available out there also there is some limitation maybe for plastic uh, i'm sorry for metal profiles but plastic profiles could be of any shape so there is the advantage here now let's look at uh, compression molding process uh, we're going to look at uh, compression molding of caps here uh, these caps are typically used, uh, you know, the, for these different kinds of beverage containers, you know, soda bottles or water bottles, um, bottle caps. You know, we have. I'm going to share a video with you where you can see a 24 cavity mold. We are we are making 24,000 pieces in an hour, and uh, there is no wastage or runner in this manufacturing process in the compression menu, compression molding manufacturing process. So I'm going to start the video here. This is the rotary compression unit. All the 24 dies or molds you can see here. The video is slowed down so that you can see it. Otherwise it's running really super fast. This is the animated video where you can see polymer, the yellow polymer is extruded from the barrel here. It is grabbed by the machine and put into the die. Molten plastic is dropped into the cavity or the die. So once it is into the cavity, the mold closes and the cap is made. The clap is dropped into the conveyor belt. So this is the process of manufacturing caps, 24,000 caps in an hour. Now, uh, just to let you know, we could have, you know, 36 or 48 molds and we could manufacture maybe 40,000 caps in an hour or more. So it all depends on how many molds and what is the requirement that you have. A very fast process and the most economical process to produce an item as small as a cap. Okay, so Srividya, were you able to see the video? Everything all right? Yep, thank you. That was wonderful. Yep. Okay, okay, perfect. So I'm going to go to the next process here, blow molding process. Now we looked at the caps. Now we're going to look learn how to do we make bottles, right? Which is blow molding. Now there are different kinds of blow molding processes, EBM, IBM, and ISBM. EBM is extrusion blow molding, which I'm going to show you a video of. Uh, IBM is uh, injection blow molding where the preform is injection molded and it is blow molded right away. And then ISBM is uh, is a process where the preform uh, is injection molded, suppose in Mumbai, and it is sent to Chennai. And then Chennai, they would, uh, you know, heat the preform and then it stretch blow molded. So there are different kinds of processes here. We're going to look at EBM today or extrusion blow molding. Okay. In the blow molding process, plastic is heated in an extruder until the plastic becomes a viscous fluid. Then this plastic is extruded through a blow molding die to form a tube shape called a parasite. A mold containing a cavity is closed around the parasite. 
Then, pressurized air is blown inside to expand the paracin against the cavity wall. The plastic is cooled by the mold, the air is released, the mold opens, and the part is released. At this plant, the excess plastic at the bottom is removed with a knife. The part is set onto a conveyor belt where the bottles move along to the bottleneck crimper, where excess plastic is removed from the neck. Okay, so that's how uh, bottles are created with the help of the extrusion blow molding process. Now we're going to learn about rotational molding. Rotational molding is used to create huge hollow objects like these water tanks and uh, big objects which uh, you know are difficult to manufacture with any other process. So I'm going to share this video uh, courtesy Granger Plastics. They'll be uh, here you will learn what is exactly rotational molding and how it is carried out and what are the different steps and what are the different products that you can manufacture with the help of rotational molding. Plastic is heated in an extruder until the plastic becomes a viscous fluid. Then this plastic is extruded through a blow molding die to form a tube shape called a parasol. A mold containing a cavity is closed around the parasol. Then, pressurized air is blown inside to expand the parasol against the cavity wall. The plastic is cooled by the mold, the air is released, the mold opens, and the part is released. At this plant, the excess plastic at the bottom is removed with a knife. The part is set onto a conveyor belt where the bottles move along to the bottleneck crimper, where excess plastic is removed from the neck. Okay, so that's how uh, bottles are created with the help of the extrusion blow molding process. Now we're going to learn about rotational molding. Rotational molding is used to create huge hollow objects like these water tanks and uh, big objects which uh, you know are difficult to manufacture with any other process. So I'm going to share this video uh, courtesy Granger Plastics. There will be uh, here you will learn what is exactly rotational molding and how it is carried out and what are the different steps and what are the different products that you can manufacture with the help of rotational molding. <laughs> What is the rotational molding process? Rotational molding is an extremely specialized process used to create exceptionally long-lasting and durable plastic parts. Rotational molding utilizes a mold to manufacture the parts like most plastic processes. But unlike most other plastic manufacturing, no pressure is used to move the material through that mold. Instead, Heat is used to melt and fuse plastic resin in a closed mold rotating on two axes. Let's take a closer look at this process. Rotational molding is a four-stage process. Stage one, loading. The first step is loading the resin in the mold. The mold has been secured closed and rotated to ensure no material is able to escape. Stage two, heating. The mold is then moved into the heating chamber of the oven while rotating on two axis at a low speed, thus both distributing and fusing the resin. Stage three, pre-cooling and cooling. After completing the cook cycle, the mold is then moved to the cooling chamber and cooled by air or water spray or a combination of both while still rotating, thus lowering the temperature in a gradual manner. Stage four, unloading. The mold is opened, the finished part is removed, and the mold is prepared for the next cycle. A variety of materials are available for rotational molding, though the most widely used is polyethylene. 
Other potential materials include plastisols, nylon, fluoropolymers, polycarbonate, polypropylene, polyurethane, and elastomers. Through the process of rotational molding, parts can be manufactured very economically, in small or large quantities, and in a variety of shapes and sizes, many of which would be impossible to produce by any other process. <clears throat> Commonly rotationally molded products include laundry parts, chemical tapes, playground equipment, shipping containers, pallets, bins, trash cans, liners, secondary containment tubs, buoys, septic tanks, piping, barriers, agricultural tanks, bulk storage containers, machine housings, and many more. Okay, so that was the rotational molding process. Now let's look at thermoforming. Thermoforming is done, uh, you know, where uh, the sheets that we looked at, you know, the sheet extrusion, those sheets are used to create product. Now, example would be these cups is one of the examples. So what they do is there is this machine, as you can see here, the sheet is put into the machine. There is an oven in there, which will heat the sheet to the predetermined temperature, which brings the, which brings the sheet to, you know, the glass transition temperature or the rubbery temperature. And then at that moment, the sheet is brought out and the dye captures the uh, the sheet and vacuum is applied. And so the particular shape of the dye is taken by the part. So we're going to look at a video which will give you a better idea. Here you can see the sheet, the heated sheet coming out. The dye coming from the bottom and vacuum is applied. And as you can see here, a product is ready. Again, the heated sheet coming out from the, uh, from the oven. The vacuum is applied. The dye comes up. And the product is manufactured right away. Again, a white sheet coming out from the oven. The dye coming out from coming from the bottom and vacuum is applied. Again, another example here, the female half is on the bottom, male half on the top. Both of them, uh, you know, close and vacuum is applied and the product is and that's how the product is manufactured. Another example where, uh, you know, the dye comes from the top and vacuum is applied. So once the product is manufactured, there is, you know, uh, further modifications or additions or uh, to the product can also be done. As you can see, there is a drilling machine used to drill the particular holes. So that was the thermoforming process. Now uh, we're going to talk about injection molding. Now, uh, injection molding could be used to produce several different uh, plastic items. One of them is medical devices. If you go to the hospital, you know, even the hospital bed, several items are made out of plastic. The medical devices, you know, the catheters, you know, the uh, uh, several cancer drug delivery devices or catheters or, you know, the injections, syringes, everything is made out of plastic. Also, kitchen storage. You know, items around in our house, the furniture, everything is made out of plastic. And these are injection molded products. Also car interior and exterior, several items, they're all injection molded. So now we're going to look at a, a injection molding video, which will show you how you how the injection molding process happens. How does the machine look like? It's an animated video courtesy Sumitomo. This is the virtual molding machine. This is the red colored part that we're going to try to manufacture using the molding machine. This is the mold, actual mold. That's the core side of the mold. This is the cavity side. This is the hopper of the machine where the raw material is put in there. This is the barrel of the machine, which has heating elements. 
This is the screw of the machine. It has three zones in it. Feeding zone, transition, metering, and the non-return valve. The screw turns and in this process, the plastic melts and melted plastic is in the front of the screw, conveyed to the front. That's the mold, which has the water cooling system in it, so that the plastic injected can be cooled right away to create the product. Molten plastic is injected into the mold. Mold cools the plastic. Screw recovers, mold opens, part is ejected. Same process again. Screw recovering, mold flows, plastic injection. Cooling. Recovery. Part ejection. So that's how injection molding happens. This is how we were able to virtually mold this red colored plastic item. Thanks to Sumitoma Dima. Okay. So that was the different plastic processing techniques that we learned about. So now you have an idea of how to create new products. And if you want to create one, what are the different processes you can use to manufacture that? And now we're going to learn about RAM, which is specific to injection molding. So let's RAM. Let's learn about RAM. What is RAM? Now, before we go to RAM or real art of molding, you know, uh, like... Uh, all injection molders face these common uh, challenges while doing injection molding or doing, uh, you know, creating plastic products with the help of the injection molding process. A new lot of material and suddenly they start getting rejects, quality deteriorates. Sometimes there is play marks on the parts or there are sink marks or the part is shrinking. It's there's shrinkage or warpage. You know, part, the part starts to warp. De deform in shape or there is a short shot you know like not a complete part is obtained or there is flash excess plastic on the part so when you implement ram or real out of molding flash disappears short shot is not there warping doesn't happen shrinkage is gone sink marks are not observed anymore splay is not there and the new lot of raw material no problem all these problems disappear when you implement RAM or real art of molding. Now, what is RAM or real art of molding? Now, RAM is like making a perfect biryani. So if you go to a high-end restaurant or a five-star place and you order a biryani today and you have it and you go after in a month and you order the same thing again, you'll be surprised that it looks and feels the same. It tastes the same also. Now, what's the secret behind the biryani taste being the same every time? The answer is recipe. You know, the chef has a checklist. You know, he has, uh, you know, a checklist which he uses to create the same tasting biryani every time. He uses the same amount of rice, same amount of water, you know, cooks it to the same temperature. He would use the thermometer to check the temperature. He will also use a stopwatch to make sure it is cooked for the right time. He will also use a measuring devices to put the same amount of the 10 different, you know, spices and ingredients that he has to add. And he will also, you know, do all this same every time. When you are using a recipe and a checklist and using the same ingredients every time, the product and product which is the biryani is going to be the same every time similarly in real art of molding what we do is we uh, you know we would uh, make sure that you know the same ingredients are there for every shot every part that is manufactured so uh, what is ram ram is creating the ideal molding recipe there are 30 ingredients now, there are 30 ingredients are, uh, which are to be set based on 
real technical data. You know, you will have to do some calculations. You might have to also do, uh, uh, you know, certain judgments based on the output that you get. So rather than what I have observed is people set the molding machines based on prior experience, but rather you have to set it scientifically. So the basic four different parameters and the others which are derivatives of these are you know, time, pressure, speed, and temperature. So only world-class quality manufacturers know about RAM and they are using it. And RAM will achieve uh, the following things. Molding machine will run at the maximum production per hour. Molding cost per piece will reduce and the highest yield will be obtained. Also, RAM, after setting the process, a RAM window is created and the RAM window looks like something what you can see here. You know, the central yellow portion is where the quality product is manufactured. You know, all these common molding challenges are on the outside. You know, the flash, we eliminate that. It's on the right side. Short shot is on the left side. You know, melting issues is on the bottom and thermal degradation is on the top. So only the perfect product is produced when you create a RAM window and produce your product within the RAM window. So doing a RAM window provides robust control over the manufacturing process. It also assures consistent quality and production floor is able to change or tweak the parameters without affecting the part quality and yield. So what RAM does is RAM lets the machine use the same time, same pressure, same speed and temperature so that every shot is the same and the end product is of the same quality. So process consistency is the key to consistent quality. The advantage of RAM, you know, change in the melt flow index, it's a property of a plastic, which determines this, uh, you know, it's, if it's viscous, less viscous or more viscous. So uh, changes in MFI uh, of raw material will not affect the part quality. Always there is consistent quality. Part weight is also consistent and there are no sudden rejects, thus improvement of yield. So now you uh, you understand that you, you know, welcome to the Cognizant Club where you understand that how to create a product and what process to use. And if you are using injection molding, you understand that RAM is the right way to go to create the same looking product time and again. So I finished my presentation here, 40 minutes as I told you. Uh, I'm open for questions now. Yep. So I have a question from Swaminathan. He says, uh, what are the advantages of cap compression molding over injection molding? Uh, 